Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 846 entitled Drill Tangs Revisited. I hope you watched a recent video, number 847, where I talked about what is a drill tang. Well, I'm beating the subject to death as usual, and I'm coming back to uh, comment on some of the comments put, uh, that you put in on the first video. Some corrections, additions, and just some useful information. I get a lot of useful information from you viewers out there, so please keep that up. So let's toss this around a little bit more. I still think that the purpose of the tang is to keep the drill from rotating in the quills. Many old-time machinists said I've been in the business for 40 or 50 years, and I've never heard that the purpose of the tang is simply to eject it out of the quill. So, I don't know. I, I don't think anyone ever told me when I was young the purpose. I just assumed that's what it was for, to drive the drill. So, the jury is out, as I said, but let's just toss some of these ideas around. Yeah, some of these older guys said that they have never in their entire life had a drill slip in the quill. Well, they use uh, drills with larger, ta larger tapers. I think they hold a little bit better. But if the drill shank is truly in good shape and the inside of the quill is in good shape, there's much less likelihood of it slipping. Now, you can see this one is scored pretty badly. Why is it scored? From spinning in the qu quill, of course. This one's in better shape. But in the other video, I talked about filing off the high spots, and I was criticized for that, and somebody said, uh, you know, use a, a stone, and I agree with that, other than sometimes you get a burr that is so big that if you just held a stone on this while it's on the lathe, it's going to go clunk, clunk, clunk as you come around, so that's why I use a file. This is already damaged, so I wouldn't worry about hurting it a little bit with a file, but be sure and move the file back and forth so you don't have a low spot because then it is not going to hold in the quill. It will slip. This needs to be true as does this. Now if you have damage to your quills, this is a South Bend, this is an Atlas, this is a Clausing. These are number twos, this is a number three. But use a tapered reamer, Morse tapered reamer, this is a number two, to clean these up very gently because you do not want to wallow it out or bell mouth it. So if there's a burr in there, that will take care of that. Similarly, with the number three, however, this will not work in this one because the tang slot is causing me to bottom out. So it will not work in the closing. But this is in good shape. One viewer said, if a tang is necessary to eject a drill from the tailstock, and we're at the closing now, why didn't they put a tang on the end of the center? I can't pull that out, but of course I just simply back the hand wheel out and that will eject it. So now I have a big drill in the quill, but as you can see, you have to take the quill all the way out to put a uh, drift into the uh, slot there, but to remove this large drill, again, you don't need to use the tang, you just back it up and it will eject itself. And everybody knows that. So there's a little bit of a contradiction there as to the purpose of the tang and the tang slot and all that if you can get the, the drills out easily as I just showed you. Okay, what's he doing now, you're thinking? Well, this is a number one Morse taper shank, a number two, and a number three. The larger the shank, the more surface area is, and the better grip there will be. That's a friction grip. Now, strictly a friction grip between the external and the internal Morse taper. So, the, again, the larger the diameter, the more surface area. So, this is a... Uh, I took tape 
and I wrapped it around this and I trimmed it and then I unrolled it so that's how much surface area there is on a number three that's a development is what it is I couldn't think of the word this is how much surface area on a two and a one so you can see it's significantly less I, that probably could be calculated mathematically, but this was the easier way to do it without me getting an old geometry book or something out. But you see the point that I'm making here? But by the same token, the, uh, the larger drills have larger, more staper, so there's more torque on a big drill than there is on a smaller one. More of a tendency for this to want to twist in the quill. That's related information that you might find interesting. A viewer brought up this point and I think it's very valid. So here are all three quills Atlas, South Bend and the uh, the closing. Notice the difference in the keyway. So the Atlas Craftsman has a relatively small key and if there is too much torque from let's say drilling a very large drill you could shear that key. As a matter of fact Scott Logan stated this in, uh, to somebody and it was passed on to me that the Logan lays have way too small of a of a key so that if there was a tang slot in there this probably would uh, shear, the key would shear. Much larger key in the closing. Matter of fact, I just pulled this out. I just reached back. This is the key that fits into the closing. It's a long key and uh, I think they call it a gib key. So that isn't going to strip. The keys that are in these other ones are rather short in length, quite short. And I don't remember the, the Logan. I no longer own the Logan. But that's also uh, a factor to consider here. But on the real large lathes, they're going to have quite a large key, I believe. Here's a very interesting point brought up by a viewer. These drills are called Tang Drive. Yes, Tang Drive. Well, how do you hold these? You have to have the appropriate holder like this. And uh, they're usually made by Scully Jones. And they make these in about a hundred sizes because you have to have the exact size of the drill, whether it be a number or a letter. It's not a chuck, it is a driver. Now this is not the one, I do not have a tang uh, drill driver. This is actually a tap driver, but the principle is very similar here. And when you put this in the quill, it will tighten up. But that is the idea of the quill drive. That's too large. This is really too small. But that is the purpose. So if this is a quill drive drill, why is this not a quill drive on this end? I don't know. You tell me. Leave some comments, please. Because this is confusing and contradictory. I know it. Now this is an R8 Morse adapter number three so that you could use a large drill like this in on your bridge port and of course you have to take the collet or the holder all the way out to eject it and in this case yes it does need to be ejected but by the way in the quills or this holder if you can't get a drill out it's really stuck put a ramrod in here and tap on it and you can usually get it out However, if the tang ha is twisted, you may never get it out without doing some damage, at least, to some of the other components. And this is a number 2 R8. But notice that the number 3 is much longer, which means you have to drop your table quite a bit on the bridge port in order to use this, which is a little bit annoying, but these can be lifesavers if you're doing that type of work in your bridge port. I'm sure I have said this before, and most of you know this already, but remember that the tangs on drills are soft. The cutting end, of course, is hard. 
Matter of fact, I believe that this is welded on. Correct me. I believe when they make drill bits, they weld the hard steel onto the soft. Either that or it's annealed. I'm not really sure. Put it in the comments if you know for sure. Well, I hope I haven't beaten this subject to death too severely. Leave comments, as I just said. Now stay tuned for just a little bit of extra credit. A man sent me an endoscope, which is a tiny camera that the doctor uses to stick up your nose. And I'm going to, in the extra credit, show you how I use this. And we'll take a look into the side of the quill. And it's, it's really a bit of foolishness, but you might find it interesting. I've never used one of these before and hope to use this in future videos. And it was given to me by Bob Patton. So thank you for that, Bob. Stay tuned now. And also just a few still pictures at the end. See you next time. And now for a little bit of a worthless extra credit, Bob Patton, a regular viewer of mine, sent this endoscope to me a few weeks ago. So let's put it to use right now. So what is an endoscope? Well, it's the same thing the doctor sticks up your nostrils. Only this isn't, isn't medical grade, but we're going to take a look into this quill from uh, the closing. And the picture will appear on my iPhone here, so I'll zoom in on that in a moment here, but this is a pretty neat device. I can adjust the, uh, it's Bluetooth, I can adjust the brightness. Watch this now. I'm still trying to learn how to use this. And, in fact, if you wanted to have a little uh, <laughs> sneak preview of my nose, Looks like a badger. It's pretty clean up there. Sickening though, isn't it? I'm not going to show you the inside of my mouth. My teeth look worse than Terrell's. Alright, let's stick this in here and see what it looks like. Again, this is the end of the closing quill. The threaded end. Originally I was just going to check the uh, the damage in the quill from spinning, but you know this one uh, never allowed the, uh, the drill to spin, so it's in real good shape. But I'll give you a little idea here. I'm, you're looking at the tang slot right there, and I'm going to insert a number three taper drill. And now it's safely in the quill and it cannot twist. Although again, many people are saying the only purpose for that tang slot is to allow you to eject the drill. So the jury is still out on that and probably will continue to be out. This is the South Bend quill. Let's look for damage. Kind of hard to tell, but it doesn't look too bad. Now the south, now the atlas. This is the atlas. And you can see some scoring on the sides. Alright, that might have been a waste of time, but some of you might have found it interesting at least. You found the endoscope interesting. 